All right, this is a specimen not found by myself. This is found from a quarry up in Wiltshire. I used to go to regularly until a friend of mine used to live very much closer and I actually let him go there because he could come down every evening to, to collect. And certainly I couldn't, I had to work for a living and I could only get there on a weekend. And he collected this, I think in 1982, not as you see it here in its unprepared state. And it was in huge, great blocks of limestone. You see most of the skeleton or the, this element here is still in the limestone with some of the bones attached. Some of them are free floating. Some of them went out into the clay. So not all of it was sort of actually in a limestone. The limestone was formed lenticles around part of the body. And the flippers were not like as you see now. They were, some of those were enclosed in rock and everything else. And the same with the mandible here, all enclosed in rock. So it took a, well, many, many months of sort of prepping and getting it to this stage and assembling it really back up. So what's it show you? Well, it's a species called possibly Kalimbosaurus. Now, Kalimbosaurus up to this time uh, had never been found with any cranial remains at all. In other words, parts of the skull, jaws or whatever. And I knew this was important when this friend of mine donated this to me because he, on the proviso, he donated it to the museum, provided I uh, cleaned it, uh, put it all back and actually we can describe this and any credits due, if it's new to science, would come to him, okay? But what does this thing show you? Well, it shows you the first, for the first time, the lower jaw, the mandible, which is really quite characteristic. It's quite big, so it's got quite a big skull. We've got a lot of the teeth. We've got lots more in the reserve collection. Um, and we've got part of the neck going right up to sort of here, and then the dorsal series start here. Now, the interesting thing is with that, when I was cleaning it down, in amongst the sort of, towards the stomach area, it wasn't ideally in the stomach, but don't forget, this is deposited in reasonable, say, certain currents and, and things would scour along the seafloor and wash up shell debris amongst the vertebrae. So it shows there was some activity. But in that sort of stomach area was a black mass, which I cleaned off and took samples of, looked under the microscope, and it's actually composed of mainly ink and hooks. And the hooks are from the tentacles of these squid called Bellinothutus. And that was all we found, that I found in the stomach area, along with very small um, quartz grit fragments, which are in, in that sort of area as well. That's quite interesting. And the other thing with this is actually, I had to put the flippers back. Now, some of this was articulated, some of it was not. But what it shows for the first time is one of the most complete front um, paddles of this particular species, if we're going to call it Kalimbosaurus. And what's really interesting about it here is actually this accessory bone here for the first time, we've got one of those and it shows how it fits perfectly like that front flipper. The other thing is, if we're looking at it again, um, is the other matching limb bone. It's got that distinctive ridge along there that that one doesn't show. And that shows some trauma or some disease in its life that's actually recorded in its bone structure. So that's quite interesting again. And the bones of the, each flipper do not match each other. Although this is not complete, they don't match each other. And um, there's little accessory bones in this one, okay, especially on the underside, but it's not shown on that one. And the other thing is with the, with the jaw arrangement is actually the teeth are very long, subtrihedral um, gracile teeth. And when you look at the teeth, you think they're not that strong. They're not a sort of, you can't imagine it grasping hold of a sort of high energy sort of fish that's flapping about in its jaws, because I, I just don't think the teeth could take that sort of thing. But judging by what was in its stomach, you know, is it feeding on primarily squid? We, you know, the, the idea it could be doing that. But again, we don't really know the flexibility of plesiosaur necks. They're still working on the biomechanics of these things. There's some argument about how much their neck could flex and how much it could move from side to side and up and down. Um, so there's still a lot to be learned about, you know, plesiosaurs. Now, that's Kalimbosaurus, okay? And it's, how do, how do you know it's Kalimbosaurus? Well, when someone describes Kalimbosaurus, the species Kalimbosaurus, it, it, he'll include in that distinctive characters that are not present in other plesiosaurs. And one of them is there's a, along the um, humerus here, there's a, 
distinctive midline ridge that is, is, a, is a character that's supposedly only found in Kalimbosaurus or along its full family. So we'll go on to the next specimen and we'll, we'll come back to that in a sec, talking about another plesiosaur. Well, this is a species of another different plesiosaur from the Kimmerer's clade called Kimmerosaurus. This was found by a friend of mine initially, Pete Langham, and it's called Kimmerosaurus langhami. Now, before uh, we found any jaw or skull remains of Kalimbosaurus, they thought Kimmerosaurus and Kalimbosaurus were synonymous. In other words, they were the same. And we now know, now we found the mandible of Kalimbosaurus, that that's not the case. It's when we do the tooth count along the jaws, um, Kimmerosaurus has got the most numerous teeth of any upper Jurassic plesiosaur. There's 36 teeth in each side of the jaw. In Kalimbosaurus there, we got about approximately 28. So there's a little bit of a difference. And the other thing is that um, we can now, with some authority, um, tell a few more facts on Kimmerosaurus. Up to a few years ago, uh, all, that remain, all that was found at Kimmerosaurus was a mandible, just a few fragments of the skull, and I think about three or four cervical vertebrae in the atlas axis, and that's, that's it, that's all they had of it. And no one had ever found any what we call postcranial remains, i.e. limb bones or anything else, of uh, Kimrosaurus. Now, based on my exploits with Kalimbosaurus, the same guy um, who found that in a quarry found this. This, this, this central bit here with the limb bone here and the few ribs. And we borrowed this actually to do a study to actually compare the two. We didn't, we, I thought that they were the same until we got this back, did a tooth count and realized that they, actually this was Kimrosaurus and that was completely different. But this one shows us something really unique. Uh, um, so we've got the first limb bone of Kimrosaurus ever found. And actually it's the same shape as Kalimbosaurus, but smaller. It's got that distinctive midline ridge, which is supposed to be a character only, only found with Kalimbosaurus, but it's now in Kimrosaurus as well. And the other interesting thing is we know that's probably the maximum size of Kimrosaurus limbs. Why do we know that? Because when we look at the, uh, the neural arches, in other words, the bits that enclose the neural canal, they're fused. Now, when they're juveniles, these are not fused, so that tells you it's a juvenile juvenile, but these are fused. And we've got the same, and we've, so there's the mandible, that size of the mandible. We've got another one here, which is from Kimridge, which are all the collapsed skull bones, the same size mandible there. And we've got another one on display there, which is half of the mandible. They're all approximately the same size. So we can actually come to the conclusion they're fused as well, these neural arches on here. So that's really an adult sort of size. So that's really, really adding to our information on um, plesiosaurs. Not only that in the collection, we've got another possible two or three other species of plesiosaur showing different characteristics to these two. So there's a lot more work to be done on it. So we've already found the first skull remains of Kalimbosaurus, if that's what it is. Um, and we've got a lot more additional information on Kimrosaurus here. And what we did with this one, this slab here that came from Kimridge, we CAT scanned this. Okay, because you see all the elements. What we wanted to do was individualize the different skull bones, which are on the slab here. But also when we CAT scanned it, we realized in the matrix underneath that was a lot more skull bones. And what we found, and I prepped it, and you can't see it here at the moment, what we've also got the first maxilla and the first premaxilla of a Kimrosaurus. So there's a lot more information in these two specimens.